this is an exploration of the American heart. What was beating in their hearts? What drove them to do what they did in their lives? Much of it, factually, we can never find. But in spirit, we can touch these dimensions. I'm from the Umatilla tribe. We are so honored and so humbled to have you here present on our soil. Welcome to Turtle Island. I could see his spirit. It's very strong. The world awaits uh, Sadhguru's next move. And ladies and gentlemen, he's off and he's gone. Sadhguru, ladies and gentlemen. Sadhguru. Sadhguru. There is a lot that modern societies need to pick up from ancient societies. Beautiful words. Touch my heart. Thank you very much. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to, to enjoy this time with you. Why are you riding for 12 hours in a day? Because a day is 12 hours, other 12 hours is night. Whatever, if we can do something, we're willing to do it. That's so much fun. There are still many, many aspects of this nation, this land, these people. We are seeing how to look at uh, bringing out the dimensions which are hidden from the eyes of a tourist brochure. So this is an exploration of the American heart. Let's see what we discover. Let's see what exciting things we encounter and what amazing sights we definitely bound to have. Probably one of the oldest structures in North America still surviving. Nearly two thousand years old, a ritualistic fortress that was built by the Native American tribe. Native Americans who built mounds for various purposes, built cities along the Mississippi banks. The next one is going to be one long ride. On the way, there's a very unique uh, mound system called Effigy Mound. They're in the form of uh, birds and animals. Evening uh, after the Effigy Mounds, we rested there for a couple of hours and uh, started off uh, just before midnight, back to old ways. <laughs> Full night riding. This is American buffalo. In many ways, uh, it's the buffalo migrations which determined the Lakota life. Killing of the buffalo was a part of the strategy to starve the Lakota nation, and it worked, unfortunately. We will be going west towards Black Hills in the next couple of days and we will be exploring this possibility uh, of who they were, their spiritual process. They had very elaborate systems of rituals. We will explore these dimensions. We are here right now at uh, 
Bare Butte, Black Hills. The gift that I'm going to present to my friend is not coming from me, it's coming from this mountain, from the Creator. These are the most sacred to us. And I can see His Spirit. It's very strong. With absolute passion for everything around them and a certain sense of dispassion about their own life, about their own death, I think there is a lot that modern societies need to pick up from ancient societies because there was a certain cohesiveness with life around them. Without that cohesiveness, everything seems to be problem. We have a long way to come, Native Americans, to heal ourselves. When we are connected to the land, cleansing in the waters and speaking our languages to our relatives, which are the plants and the animals, then we are living something which we call Heshokish Tsawak, which translates to everything is one. <laughs> People are talking about ecology as a science, that way it will never work. Ecology should become our heart as it was for the, the indigenous people here. Their heart was land. That is one dimension that we really want to present to the world. That's the reason why I'm meeting all Native American leaders, medicine men and others, so that they express themselves clearly and their message is not of the past, it is most relevant for the future. Mato Tipila, in my experience, in the entire North American continent, at least in United States and Canada, I would say, is probably the one most powerful space that you can see in this part of the world. Uh, Tab, you are a singer, you must spend minimum three days at this Mato Tipila, especially on the full moon night, I'm telling you, you will realize something tremendously powerful. Anybody who realizes or opens up the throat center, their ability to connect with life, I'm saying when I say connect with life, you can touch beyond your physical reach, literally touch. Here there's an energetic body expressing this dimension of the throat center in the human system in an extremely powerful way which is, uh, I've never seen a place like that in my life. I've, I've traveled literally everywhere, I'm talking about. This Mato Tipila is a must for every indigenous person, it's a must. The basis of your culture in some way energetically is here. And with connecting with that could also be the liberation for the future. I wish our leaders thought like you, man. I love that, I commend you, uh, said Guru, for thinking like that. I love that oneness mentality. We need more of that. So here we are at uh, Bryce Canyon, most incredible formations. They're almost like frozen people the way it looks. Definitely important thing is people lived here for ten to twelve thousand years without disturbing anything, without pulling down anything. That is the significance. Incredible rock formations. Wow, I don't know if cameras can ever do justice to these rocks. And I came here yesterday, <laughs> and even now it gives me goosebumps from head to toe. I'm still yet to sit down here with eyes closed 
and figure out what is it that it's doing to my body. I'm so jealous of your of your trip. It looks <laughs> phenomenal. I love that you're you're spreading awareness about culture's connection to nature and spirituality. Thank you very much, Alexander. Namaskar. These tremendous structures of nature for millennia has been an inspiration for the Hopi for their explorations for them to come and wonder about the nature of the Creator. If you're in this valley, even now I'm saying, if you stay in this valley for a few weeks all by yourself, the very energy and the tremendous power that these rock structures exude would leave you in some way transformed. If at all ever in the history of humanity, we can transform human beings, this is the moment. Initially I thought it's the rocks, but it's the very space and it's so sensitive to human presence and I'm sure uh, those natives who are sensitive to this dimension would definitely say there are spirits working upon them, which they're not very wrong in a way, <laughs> it's, it's the spirit of the earth, but there's a phenomenal amount of energy flow. existed here not as exploiters of land but as land itself. Meeting, conversing, understanding and above all projecting the image of Native American people in a positive and relevant way to the rest of the world, this is the mission. We've been utilizing yoga as a tool for healing. It was gifted to us from the people of the East and it was written in our prophecies that we would receive this gift. Yoga is helping us to heal at the cellular level. Our people are on a journey to reclaiming their bodies and minds and this is a practice that we are honored and blessed to be able to utilize today. I have been deeply, deeply touched by the way the indigenous people in North America have lived, their sensitivity towards earth. These things are very, very important for me and also because what they have gone through in the last few centuries, these have a very deep and profound place in my heart. In whichever way we can help you and your people, we are most willing to do that. As you should know by now, we are also offering the inner engineering program in a special offer for all the indigenous people in this country. Please, uh, in whichever way you can make use of it, please do that. <laughs>